The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are. And welcome to Nautel's introduction of Nautel Television. This is an exciting day. I'm Chuck Kelly, and I have with me Mr. Wendell Lonergan, Head of Broadcast Sales here at Nautel. Good afternoon, Wendell. Good afternoon, Chuck. How are things? Doing great. I don't know how many of you know, but and I have to say this carefully, he's not the oldest employee, but he's doggone what been around here for a very long time, and you started in the engineering department, didn't you? That's correct. I was uh, head of the AM broadcast uh, development team for, for several years. And none of those things ever have decided to quit, neither of you, so that's a good thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the fact that Nautel's getting into the television business. We're going to talk about our first new product, the MT100. We're going to talk about what's cool about it and delve into the technical details a bit. And we're going to answer some questions you might have about the price and the shipping. You may not uh, be happy that we're not going to be relatively committal, but we're going to answer some of those questions. And, and we're going to talk about where do we go from here, and we're going to take your questions and comments. And that brings up this slide, because if you'll notice in your little go-to webinar um, uh, panel on the right-hand side, hopefully, of your screen, you have the opportunity to ask questions. So go into the questions tab and uh, type your little questions, and uh, we will do our best to, uh, to answer them as, as time permits at the end of the um, uh, at the end of the, of the presentation. So we hope to get to all of your questions. And, and if those of you who are listening to this uh, as a recording, of course you can't ask questions, but do emails, email us uh, for questions at sales at nautel.com. So without further ado, why is Nautel getting into the television business? Most of the television transmitter bi business is, is a mess right now. Acridine is, is out of the business. Xera just reorganized. Harris has indicated that they are exiting the broadcast transmission business, in fact, the broadcast business as a whole. Thompson and others are shells of their former self. And the reason for that isn't that they did something wrong or that they they're not smart people. The reason for that is that the digital transition came in a big pulse in both North America and in Europe. And when that business died away, they were sized for a business that was uh, it was too difficult. So um, basically, what has happened here is that the television transmitter business has changed a lot, and uh, sales have dropped, and and uh, so they're unable to support the infrastructure they built. To Nautel, on the other hand, TV is all upside. Since we never had television, we're expanding our offerings to the remaining two-thirds uh, as the remaining two-thirds of the world converts to digital. So uh, most importantly, our customers over the last few years, you know, every company has, has, has very good customers that they develop. And certainly over the 43 years of Nautel, we've developed some very, very good customers that feel very comfortable with Nautel. And, and we feel very comfortable with the customer, and they come to us. In fact, they call us on the carpet, and they say, you know, Chuck or Wendell, um, uh, we like dealing with Nautel. We like the reliability, the robustness, the service and support that you offer. We like the innovation of your products. We have a problem. We're also in the television business, and we're not too comfortable right now with the financial stability of the manufacturers that we have heretofore used as television transmitter manufacturers. So, we would very much like it if you would get into the television transmitter business. And frankly, one of the key tenets of Nautel over the years has been that, that we ignore our customers' comments like that at our own peril. <laughs> we think it's very important to listen to your customers, and that's why we're, uh, that's a major reason why we're getting into this business. Right, and as we introduced this product at the IBC show just last month in, in Amsterdam, we had many of our, our um, good friends and, and customers from the last several years come up to us and say, thank you, we're so happy to see you now coming into the TV business. So we're, we're very excited about this. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. So therefore, we are introducing the MT100, which is our first offering. And it's a compact, reliable, all-in-one, 100-watt digital uh, UHF television transmitter that includes uh, a modulator with adaptive pre-correction, remote control, even a mask filter, all in a compact enclosure. It's an ideal platform for low-power TV broadcasting, retransmission, or gap filler applications. And best of all, it's backed by Nautel's worldwide support. 
So again, it is a our first product. Uh, it is solid state, two to one hundred watts, digital UHF, working with most all of the DPV standards. It's unique to bed in the industry in that it is a compact solution. While it includes the digital exciter with adaptive pre-correction, the PA, the power supply, the controller with web server, and the output mask filter all in one. And I don't know about you, Wendell, but when I've gone out and seen television transmitter sites, oftentimes they're collections of boxes. You've got an exciter box over here. You've got a you've got a, a filter or mask filter over here. And, and sometimes even the power supply and the and the PAs are in different boxes. And uh, so I, I kind of think that the approach that we've taken with the VS has been very, very popular. Where you just hook up the, the input, you hook up the uh, AC, and you hook up the antenna, and you're off to the races. Right. Simplicity is beautiful. And it makes service a lot simpler, too. Absolutely. So the NT100 is actually a co cooperative development between three organizations. Pro Television in Denmark is a company that specializes in very high technology, very integrated uh, exciters and modulators. Jim Young Communications is an organization that Nautel has worked very closely with in Korea for, gosh, more than 30 years as our representative and is a highly, highly knowledgeable, uh, skilled organization in its own right. And of course, our, our friends here at Nautel. And between us, we have decades of experience and we've developed an innovative, cost-effective product which advances the state-of-the-art in television transmission significantly. In addition, we've been working hard. We know that you don't sell a television transmitter um, by itself. You have to sell other bits and pieces to go along with it. So we've been working hard to build relationships and partnerships with companies that make encoders and multiplexers as well as TV filters, combiners, and antennas. That's right. And we're, again, as we introduce this product to the IDC, we've had many of our, our new friends coming to visit us and, and share their, their, their good products with us. So it's, it's, it's a great looking future for us. Okay. Um, what makes it cool? Well, it's, it, first off, it's completely self-contained, state-of-the-art, 100 watt digital UHF transmitter. One of the things that's very neat is at these power levels and price point, you don't often get both linear and nonlinear digital pre-correction. In fact, many of them don't have adaptive pre-correction at all. Many of them are fixed pre-correction, and you end up with a lot better spectral performance if you're, and, and the ability to meet the mask uh, a lot better if you have both linear and nonlinear adaptive pre-correction. Uh, as I mentioned, the output, output mask filter is mounted internally. Installation and maintenance are dead simple. There's an LDMOS amplifier, as many of you know. LDMOS is the latest and greatest in terms of efficiency um, and, and performance these days. In fact, our new uh, MV Light series is, is all based on uh, LDMOS amplifiers and the previous VS, uh, or M, I'm sorry, VS uh, 2.5 is based on LDMOS as well. And we're using the same flavor of automatic switching power supply as we do in the MV Light, uh, a company called um, Lineage. Lineage, thank you, right at the tip of your tongue. And, and that also is a very, very high efficiency supply. This transmitter has an input for external GPS receiver. It has a high stability OCXO for the frequency stability. This is very important between the GPS receiver and the OCXO in SFN operation. So whether you're doing SFNs or gap fillers or what have you, having a high stability uh, frequency reference is very key. We also can do translators, so we have the opportunity to plug in a board, which we will show you in a second, um, which provides the receiving functions. It has dual ASI or SMPTE 310 inputs with seamless switching, and it has internal web server for monitoring and control of all functions. And included in that, because it's got the adaptive pre-correction, it knows the status of the upper and lower mask shoulders. It reads it digitally and allows you to see that on the web from a distance. So that allows you to make sure that your spectral compliance is what it should be. Absolutely. Looking inside the box, this is from the top. You can see over here where we take a sample for the linear sample. And off the output side, after the filter, we take the, the nonlinear sample. Here's the output filter. As we mentioned, it's internal. The LDMOS amplifier, an IPA. Plopping the unit over on its other side. There's where the optional receiver is. Here's the exciter card. And here's the the uh, GPS interface at the OCXO, the controller card, the 
main power supply, and the DC to DC converter. One other thing that's kind of interesting is the whole transmitter runs on this power supply, and then the rest of the voltages are derived from that power supply. Therefore, if you had an installation that was solar powered and you had access to 48 volts DC, well, that just happens to be the output voltage of this power supply, so it would be possible to make this transmitter run off of 48 volts DC. Looking at the back of the transmitter, here's your two uh, I, uh, input our uh, video inputs, uh, the ASI and the SIMT310. Uh, here's the GPS inputs over here. Uh, there's a monitor and an ASI monitor. There's the exciter and uh, controller web servers, uh, some debug ports, an RS-232, parallel remote control, and um, uh, power supply input and RF output. Pretty standard stuff. Standard stuff. Straightforward and easily, easily figured out. Yep. There's a block diagram of the transmitter. Again, not a whole lot complicated. The bulk of the, of the interesting stuff happens in the exciter because this is where the uh, auto pre-correction uh, pre occurs. So you can see here the, non, uh, the linear sample and the non-linear sample are coming off and going into the exciter. Here's the two data inputs. Here's the optional receiver DMOD, uh, power supply, DC to DC converter, controller, up with mask filter, various sensors and monitor points. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Yeah. KISS principle. Absolutely. This is one of the uh, uh, the web server screens. This happens to be the one for the Pro Television Exciter card. It's actually a very intelligent unit. I can drag and drop pieces into the bottom side and then go into much greater detail, dig down for, for detail, uh, not only of monitoring but also control. I can see the status of various inputs. I can see the status of the output from the the uh, unit, I can see the shoulder levels where I'm, where I'm what, what uh, my spectral purity is, and so it's, it's, uh, it's a very, very powerful unit. Then I thought it might be kind of nice just to take a look at some of the uh, test equipment. This, I believe, is a piece of Technotronics test equipment, which has been used to, to measure the performance of this transmitter. Of course, we've been doing a lot of measuring to make sure it meets our standards and yours. And so here you can see one of the screens of, of the performance of the unit. And then we could switch. This is Magellant, uh, which is allowing us to see the ABSB signal and see the spectrum here. Um, and you can see a lot of the information about the signal to noise or MER here is running this one running about 36 dB, almost 37, which wow. is That's a pretty amazing fantastic. number to have its own. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can change here and look at another one. This is looking at amplitude errors and phase errors well within the tolerance of the specifications of the transmitter. And here we are looking at out-of-channel emissions. This is a really, really important one. I can't stress how important this is in the world of digital broadcasting where you have uh, adjacent channels with another huge big set of, of uh, ATSC or other digital system carriers right up against it. The important thing of having that that clearance to this mask, and look how far below that mask we are. At this point here, we're about, looks like about 13 or 14 dB below the mask, and it even gets greater as we get further down. So um, the, the transmitter, because of the adaptive pre-correction, both linear and nonlinear, and the aggressive filtering, we have a very, very good mask performance on this transmitter. This is the phase jitter, phase noise, which of course contributes to the, the, uh, the MER of the, of the signal. Here is actually a reading using this uh, Tektronix device of the MER. And it, this one is calculating the signal to noise or complex MER right above 40 dB, which is amazing. And here's the eye diagram that corresponds with that. So you can see here the cleanliness of the eyes in the air gives you an idea a graphical representation of the performance of the transmitter. So here's the basic specifications. The transmitter itself is broadbanded across the entire UHF band. Of course, the output mass filter has got to be purchased and tuned to that frequency. Um, the AC input is, is a standard uh, automatically switching. The operating temperature from minus 10 to plus 45 Celsius. Um, pretty standard Specifications all the way down the list here. Give those a scan. 
Transmitter works uh, in ATSC mode from 2 watts to 100 watts. <coughs> you can see the frequency stability of plus or minus 0.5 uh, parts per million. Spurious and harmonics down over 60 dBs from carrier. Uh, power stability better than 5%. Signal to noise ratio, which is, um, is also MER, is in the order of 33 dB guaranteed, but we've seen better numbers already. So you can see the kind of performance of the transmitter, um, uh, which is pretty high performance for a power of, uh, transmitter of this power level. So here's the questions people typically ask. Okay, can you do ATSC? Well, that's North America. Yes, it's already working in ATSC. And all these measurements were taken in ATSC. Can it do DVB-T, DVB-T2, which is probably a, the, the, those two standards comprise the, the world's sh largest share in terms of, of digital television standards. And yes, it works in both. As a matter of fact, we showed the transmitter operating in DVB-T2 mode at the IBC show in Amsterdam just a couple weeks ago. ISDBT-B, which is the South American variety, and ISDBT, which is the Japanese and Philippine variety. We do the ISDBT Brazilian variety, or South American variety, and soon we'll be able to provide the Japanese Philippine variety. Uh, it does work in repeater and gap filler operations. That's an option. It uh, has a four-year standard Nautel warranty. Um, the standard AUI that you come to know and love in the Nautel transmitters, not yet, but we're working on it. And I'll show you an artist rendition of, of said AUI here in a, in a moment. And a lot of people are asking about higher power levels. Well, for sure, Nautel intends to increase the power level offerings that we have in television transmitters. However, um, do bear in mind that approximately 58% of the worldwide DTV UHF installed base is in the range of 2 to 100 watts, the largest quantity of transmitters by far in this category. So we want to understand your thoughts. We are in the, we know what we don't know, and we, we want to hear from you what things we should do in order to um, get better at television and, and make sure we've got this product right and properly positioned in the marketplace. So we're taking 60 days to understand the feedback we're getting make sure we're getting this right. Uh, please address any emails with feedback to me, Chuck Kelly, ckelly at nautel.com, and I would very, very much appreciate your feedback. Um, we, we trust in our friends to, to, to share with us their experience and knowledge and tell us if we're missing a key feature or if this is a, a, the right thing at the right time or if it's not. Um, we know that our pricing is going to be competitive with other similarly configured products, and we plan on uh, to begin shipping prior to the end of the year. But apart from that, until we get that feedback upstairs that I just mentioned, um, we're kind of holding it a little, all a little close to our chest. But further details will be available soon and talk to your Nautel sales representative, either Nautel employee, regional sales manager, or your local representative, depending on where you are. And what do you expect from here? Where do, what do you expect uh, from Nautel with this? Well, we plan to add to the line with higher power modes. We have planned to enhance the web interface to make it comparable to the AUI that we have on all the rest of our, our transmitters, and as well add test equipment. We have plans for the same sort of innovative features that we pioneered in the NX, the NV, and the VS series. And just for fun, we took a look at the worldwide market for TV transmitters, estimated to be over $165 million a year. So there's, there's room for little old Montel in that, I think. <laughs> But regardless of how exciting this new market is, we will never, never, never abandon our leadership in the radio transmitter business. We are today, and we will be tomorrow, uh, people that are involved in the radio transmission business as well as the leadership in the digital business. For those of you with a keen eye, you may notice here at the bottom that heretofore every PowerPoint that you've seen from us said making digital radio work, well, we kind of modified that slightly, and it's now digital broadcasting work, so we're excited. So this is a picture, an artist rendition of the, of the AUI and where we're going with it. You can see that we intend to have the same kind of monitoring going on in the transmitter as you know and, and, and love with, with the other Nautel radio transmitters. So these are features that are being developed right now and, and uh, will be available in the future. That's right, and, and not that screen is the aggregate of not only our, our 
highly skilled design engineers, but feedback from all our good friends that have used our product over the years. So again, we certainly invite your, your comments and suggestions for for improvements on our TV efforts. Absolutely. It's, a, it's you know, it's your feedback that has gotten us the innovation uh, that, that we have done in the radio transmitter business. So all the features that we've added in the last few years uh, and the AUI, the way it developed in the radio transmitters, is as a result of the feedback that we've received from many of you who have taken the time to write or see us at trade shows or SBE meetings or what have you. And we, we greatly appreciate that feedback. So if there are questions, here's the motley group that we have assembled of, uh, of, Nautel, sales, of the Nautel sales team and, and look for the person that uh, is the closest to you and, and uh, it handles your area and give them a shout. You can email us all at sales at Nautel.com. It will be routed to the right person. So let's, let's see if there have been some questions that we should be answering here. And okay. So. There's a comment that somebody likes the test pattern we started off. Somebody remembers the old Indian head test pattern. That's cool. That's, there are some gray hairs in the audience. Okay. So let's see here. Um, and are the add-on power amps for higher TPOs planned? Actually, I, I don't think it's going to be a modular thing like that. Thank you for that question, Tim. Um, the intent at this point in time is to actually release different versions with higher power, but the same basic feature set. And of course, as we go higher, we will have to uh, put more emphasis in addition on even higher efficiency answers. We will put more focus on technologies that allow higher efficiency. So those are the questions we've got at the moment. If you didn't have a chance to get a question in, email, email us at sales at nautel.com. Meanwhile, for, uh, for Wendell Lonergan, I'm Chuck Kelly. Thank you so much for participating, and have a good day.